Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Good morning ladies and gentlemen It's great to see you all here Thank you I offer my expression of gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Due to his favor and charity So we could carry out our activities My name is Arwin Olandari Hippie I am oral and maxillofacial surgery resident of Hasanuddin University from Indonesia. Thanks to the organizing committee who has given me the opportunity so that I can present my case report with the title Honey as a Wound Tracing Treatment for Odontogenic Cutaneous Fistula Result from Left Mandibular Abscess, a case report. For introduction, odontogenic cutaneous fistula arises as a sequel of bacterial invasion of the dental pulp, become necrotic, and infection spreads into the periradicular area, resulting in dissection and breakthrough to form sinus tracts that drain towards the skin. Honey has been used since ancient times as a remedy in wound care. Evidence from animal studies and some trials has suggested that honey has a potential role in the field of tissue engineering and regeneration. Objective uh, for this case report was describing a case report about management of odontogenic cutaneous fistula resulted from left mandibular abscess by using honey as a wound dressing treatment. An odontogenic cutaneous fistula is a pathologic communication between the cutaneous surface of the face and the oral cavity. Usually arises as, as a sequel to bacterial invasion of the dental pulp through a breach in the enamel and dentin by a carious lesion, trauma, or other causes. Infection can spread beyond tooth confines and periodontal tissue, then follow paths of lower resistance to drain purulent material. Of the inflammatory process leads to bone resorption that subsequently dissects along the path of less resistance and erupts through skin where the discharge of purulent exudates flow through tissues and structures along paths of less resistance. Honey is a viscose supersaturated sugar solution derived from nectar gathered and modified by the honeybee, Apis mellifera. Honey contains approximately 30% glucose, 40% fructose, 5% sucrose, and 20% water, as well as many other substances, such as amino acids, vitamins, minerals, and enzymes. Honey has been used as a wound treatment by indigenous cultures around the globe for thousands of years. The way in vitro and in vivo evidence supports this resurgence, demonstrating that honey debrids wounds, kill bacteria, penetrates biofilm, lowers one pH, reduce, reduces chronic inflammation, and promotes fibroblast infiltration, among other beneficial qualities. Given this result, it is clear that honey has a potential role in the field of tissue engineering and regeneration. For the case report, a 29-year-old woman with no known comorbidity was referred to oral and maxillofacial surgery department regarding of painful facial swelling with open infected wound on the left cheek and limited opening of mouth. Her history of recurrent toothache 10 days priorly then followed by facial swelling with pain and fever. The patient had given antibiotic and analgetic per oral, but the swelling gradually grew larger and sinus tract was, for, was formed on her left cheek. On extraoral examination, facial swelling with 8 by 6 by 3 cm in size and a fistula on parietodia masseterica region with skin opening 3 to 4 to 1.5 cm in size with reddish irregular border and pus actively discharged was observed. Uh, mud opening was only 2 cm. From adjunctive examination, blood examination revealed a mild elevated white blood count and slightly lower hemoglobin level. CT scan revealed soft tissue defect with white swelling in left mesticator, a part of salivary gland and submandibular space with cervical enlargement of diffuse gland that suggests inflammation or infection process. 
from the OPG X-ray showed lower lower left third molar with profound decrease and a peri periapical radiolucency. There were periapical radiolucencies around upper left upper left second molar and lower left first molar region. Uh, the yellow oral indicated radiolucency around the apex of lower left first molar and third molar. From the history taking and examination, uh, we got the diagnosis of the patient as buccal abscess that spreading to submandible with odontogenic cutaneous fistula on left cheek, secondary to chronic periradicular periodontitis of lower left first molar and third molar. For the treatment, the patient got hospitalized, intravenous antibiotic and analgetic therapy for three days, then surgical extraction of teeth 3836 and 27 and one cleaning of extraoral fistula was performed on local anesthesia. The extraoral fistula pulled using povidone iodine 10% solution and bandage using sterile gauze with pressure then change every day. On the third day, honey was applied as a wound dressing in sterile gauze that had been smeared with it. One care was performed every day and evaluated every two weeks to assess the signs of infection and the healing process of the wounds. For the evaluation, as we see the clinical photographs, after two weeks of honey dressing treatment, wound size was decreased to 1.5 by 2.5 by 0.4 cm with muscle base irregular edges, rising granulation tissue covering the muscle, and epithelialization at the wound edges. As for the edema, active bleeding and post vernal angio found. After four weeks of honey dressing treatment, muscle tissue was at the base of the wound with rising granulation. One size was 0 0.5 to uh, by 2 cm after 12 weeks the wound was almost completely covered by healthy skin tissue and epithelialization with scab on the center of the wound as for the scar was planned for repair of skin surgery with rotational flap leather in general anesthesia And for the discussion section, odontogenic cutaneous fistulas are one of the manifestations of chronic dental infection that provide a path for drainage of pus and infection. Peak incidence age at 16 to 30 years with slight female predilection and the most frequent location or mandible angle. The classic lesion is a smooth, symmetric erythematous nodule up to 20 mm in diameter with or without drainage and presenting skin retraction secondary to healing. For one healing process, as we see at the diagram, uh, is, classic, is classically divided into four stages. Hemostasis, which is seconds to hours, inflammatory phase, which is hours to days, proliferative phase which is days to week and remodeling phase which is weeks to months. There is significant overlap of the aforementioned stages. Honey may positively influence three phases of wound healing, inflammatory, proliferative and remodeling phase, including immunologic modulation via increased production of cytokines as well as promotion of tissue granulation and epithelialization. Healing effect of honey could be classified by its antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and the breathing action properties of its components. For antibacterial properties of honey, the first high molarity uh, that inhibited microbial growth because the sugar molecules tie up water molecules so that bacteria have insufficient water to grow. Glucose oxidase, the one that lowers the pH of honey, therefore reduces 
Protease activity increases oxygen release from hemoglobin and stimulates the activity of macrophages and fibroblasts. Hydrogen peroxide and non peroxide like methyl glyoxal uh, that forms highly toxic hydroxyl radical which is involved in microbial killing sterilizes the wound and stimulates vascular endothelial growth factor production. Nitric oxide that potentiates hydrogen peroxides in bacterial killing inhibits virus replication and intracellular pathogens and stimulates immune response. For anti-inflammatory properties of honey, immunostimulatory activity of honey on leukocytes causes the production of cytokines which lead to the stimulation and growth of cells. Honey can lower plasma prostaglandin concentration in normal individuals. The site of action could be either at cyclooxygenase 1 or cyclooxygenase 2 or both. Honey stimulates the angiogenesis, granulation, and epithelialization. Uh, honey can trigger the sequence of events to enhance angiogenesis and proliferation of fibroblasts and epithelial cells by producing certain growth factors like um, tumor, tumor necrosis factor alpha. For the other effect of honey to one healing process, we can see that hydrogen peroxide stimulates the activity of the protease and improves plasmin activity in the gasting fibrin on the surface of the one but doesn't degas the collagen matrix needed for the tissue repair. The antioxidant components of honey such as flavonoids, monophenolics, polyphenols, and vitamin C. Evaluation of honey as a wound dressing treatment for odontogenic cutaneous fistula. We can see that wound size has gradually decreased in our case. Edema, active bling, and pus were no longer found and the wound almost completely covered. In our case, honey has proven the ability to stimulate granulation and epithelialization in odontogenic cutaneous fistula treatment with no reported side effects. For the conclusion, we have two points. First, management for odontogenic cutaneous fistula result from mandibular abscess include close observation and treatment, antibiotic therapy, surgical intervention, and honey we can choose as a one dressing. Second, with antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, immunostimulatory effect, and other properties of honey, it is recommended to use honey as a biologic wound dressing that work in concert to expedite the healing process. That's all. Thank you for the opportunity and your attention. Wabillahi taufiq wal hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.